Christmas lights are pretty cool. But wouldn't it be cool to have pink lights for Valentine's Day and red, white, and blue lights for 4th of July and green for St. Patrick's Day? The answer is yeah, that would be cool. You could probably find some company somewhere that would do a system like that for you, put up a bunch of LEDs and make it all programmable and stuff. I have no idea how much it would cost, but I guess it would be in the thousands. I'll show you how I did it for a few hundred, maybe about three, four hundred dollars, and probably about 20, 25 hours of work. Want to see? Yeah, you do. First thing you got to do is you got to plan out where you want the lights. Go take some measurements. I went, climbed up on the roof, got the tape measure out, measured out how long all the different spots were where I wanted it so that I would know how many lights I needed to buy. For my setup, I needed 10 strings of lights. They're about 16 feet each, five meters. You also need to pick a location for the power supply and the control chip. I put mine in a waterproof box near a power outlet. There are a lot of options for individually addressable LED lights that you can choose from. These are the lights that I used. They're 2811 5 volt lights. They are 5 meter strings with 50 LEDs over the 5 meters. So that's one about every 3 inches. One LED about every 3 inches. To figure out how much power you need, determine how many LEDs you have and then give yourself 20 milliamps for each LED. So for mine that's 500 LEDs uh, at 20 milliamps each that's 10 amps. I bought a 60 amp 5 volt power supply really only just because it was the same price as a 10 amp power supply and just in case I wanted to crank them all the way up to max light and blind the neighbors. Each LED can actually draw up to 60 milliamps so you may want to build in a little bit of extra power capacity but the only way you're going to need the 60, the whole 60 milliamps is if you turn the lights on white and crank them up to full brightness. You also want to get some kind of a waterproof box. The power supplies are not generally waterproof. You can get waterproof ones, but they're a lot more expensive. And it's got to be big enough to hold the power supply and the little control chip and all your wires and such. There are also a bunch of different options for controlling your LEDs. I think the best option is Home Assistant. If you haven't heard of Home Assistant, it's an open source smart home hub. I definitely recommend you go check out Ben at Bra Automation. He's like level 40 Home Assistant wizard. Everything I know about Home Assistant, I learned from Ben. To get Home Assistant set up to control your lights, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. And a Wi-Fi control board. I used the Wemo or Wemos uh, D1 Mini. You'll also need some small gauge uh, paired wire. I used some 20 gauge stuff like this. I used a breadboard and some jumpers as well to keep things nice and tidy inside the box. Uh, you can do that if you want or you can just splice things together. Doesn't matter. So like I said, everything I know about Home Assistant and how to control these lights I learned from Ben at Bra Automation. I could try explaining it here and do it all over again, but I would not be able to do it as well as Ben does it. So right now I'm just going to say pause, go watch Ben's video, set up your Home Assistant and then come back. Pause. Okay, welcome back. If that went according to plan, you should have Home Assistant set up on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you should have an MQTT broker set up and tested, and you should have the Arduino IDE downloaded and installed. Now follow the link in the description to the GitHub page for this project and you'll find all these files. Copy this partial configuration file and paste it into your own configuration.yaml file for Home Assistant. You'll need to change these parts here for your MQTT broker. The Home Assistant-1 can stay the same, but you put your name and your password. Then everything else you just copy all the way down to the bottom. Now go back and grab the INO file, that's the Arduino file for the Wemos board. You'll see I borrowed it from Ben. You'll need to change here your Wi-Fi name and password, that's the Wi-Fi in your house. And then you have to change the IP address, the username, and the password for your MQTT broker. Now don't change the data pin, but make sure that the LED type, the color order, and the number of LEDs match your setup. Okay, that's it. Nothing else to change here. The whole rest of this file can stay as is. Now it's ready to upload to your Wemos board. I started working on another video to show you how to adjust the colors and make some of your own more custom animations than, than the ones that I have here. Uh, so hopefully that'll be done pretty soon. Now, next thing I want to tell you is you will save yourself a lot of headache if you lay out your entire setup in a test environment before you start climbing on ladders. 
I didn't do that the first time and I spent a lot of time on the roof that I didn't need to because once I got it all set up on the roof, it didn't work. So save yourself some pain and do a thorough test before you actually get up on the roof or start hanging any lights. Here's a close up of the control chip and the wires for the LEDs. The red wire goes to the five volt pin, the white wire goes to the G or ground pin, and the green wire goes to the D4 pin for data. The extra red and white wire go to plus and minus on your power supply. Voltage drop on these LEDs can be a real problem. Each LED adds a little bit of resistance, and if the voltage drops too much, the LEDs won't work. We're starting with 5 volts, so you don't have a lot to lose before your LEDs start to dim and malfunction. So to eliminate this problem, just run an extra pair of wires from the power supply and join them in at the beginning of each set of lights. I'll show you on the wiring diagram. The resistance in just the wire isn't enough to cause you a problem. I ran my wire over 150 feet and I didn't see an appreciable difference in the voltage at the end. I can measure a difference, I can measure the drop, but it wasn't enough to dim the LED lights. You don't need to boost the voltage of the data wire. The data wire gets a boost back to 3 volts at each LED, so essentially the data wire could go on forever. However, one very important thing to know about the data wire is that the distance between the board and the first LED has to be pretty short. I had serious trouble with my data wire when it got longer than about 2 feet, so I suggest making it super short. In fact, mine I have the first LED right outside of the waterproof box so that the data wire is, you know, maybe a foot long. You can run all these lights off of one data pin. It doesn't matter if you have different number of lights in your different strings. In the Arduino sketch, you have to set the number of LEDs that you have. So as long as you set it to the longest string, the others will function fine. For example, I set mine to 200 because my longest string is 200 lights long. 150 LED runs still function fine. Now, the opposite's not true. If I set my LED number in the Arduino sketch to 150, my 200 LED run will not function appropriately. That took a while for me to figure out. That really just took some testing. I didn't have, I couldn't find anybody that would tell me one way or the other if that would work. Maybe everybody just knew it, except me, but I just tested it and it worked. At this point, you'll have to have Home Assistant set up and you'll have to have the sketch all on your WeMOS board. Um, to be able to do a full test. Home Assistant has a pretty nice iPhone app or you can just use your web browser, point it to your Home Assistant instance, your Pi, whatever, and start testing. After initially failing to hang the lights in a way that looked good, I found a really nice way to hang these lights. I got this vinyl J channel from Lowe's. Like I said, the LEDs are about three inches apart, so I just drilled a hole every three inches all the way down this J channel. I made a little 3D printed jig to make the drilling go a lot faster and I'll include the STL file if anybody wants it. Once the holes are drilled, then you spray paint the J channel to match your house. Mine was kind of a brownish, grayish. Next step is jump up on the ladder and mount your waterproof box with your power supply and your Wemo board. I secured the power supply inside the box with some metal strapping. Now finally, it's time to get some lights hung. Make sure you've got the correct end of the light string. There should be some sort of an arrow or an indicator that says this is the start of the lights and that's the end of the light. And that's important because the data has to travel in the correct direction. If you hook up the, the far end of the lights into the box, you're not gonna, it's not going to work. Next, pop the lights into the holes in the channel and tuck the wires in as best you can. Use some small sheet metal screws to attach the J-channel to the house. When you need to change directions because of the shape of the house, just cut the J-channel with some strong scissors. Be smart about climbing on your roof or on your ladder. A trip to the ER is not included in the budget for this project.
So for about $300 and 20, 25 hours of work, you can get some awesome lights for every holiday. Now credit for this idea goes to my daughter Zoe. She was the one who said, wouldn't it be cool if we had lights for like other holidays like Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day and 4th of July? Thanks Zoe, you're a genius. So I hope that works out for you. Give me some comments, let me know if you need help. I'll do what I can to try and answer your questions. This was a lot of figuring out on my part how to do it and I'm happy to do what I can to try and help anybody else that's trying to figure it out. This is the point in the video where we beg for likes and subscribes. And if you want to be sure to see whatever the next video is, click the little bell. Okay, thanks. Adios.